Hello everybody. Um, this video is covering the version 1.3, uh, 1.3.2 release of my phaser workflow uh, plugin and macros. Um, so there are some new macros. So I've already gone ahead and imported them into this show file. So you will need to re-import, which as a reminder, you just click on it and it gives you the import macros uh, option. Um, there have been some new macros added as well as some fixes to existing macros. So I'm going to go over the fixes first and then talk about uh, what's new. Um, so on the initial release, um, I had some goof up on the call single line macro, I believe, conflicting with the calls recipe template macro, where I used um, a global variable on one and a user variable on the other, and it I wasn't deleting the variables at the end of the macro, so it was causing conflicts. So now all of the macros that use any kind of re uh, variable whatsoever have uh, delete lines at the end of the macro to make sure that there's never any conflicts between macros, which I should have been doing from the beginning, but I was lazy and dumb. Um, so that has been handled for anybody who was running into weird issues uh, with those. Uh, and then I've also added uh, a bit of error checking. So previously, when you extracted um, a base preset from a um, recipe preset, it could, if it had multiple lines in it, could overwrite other presets in its path, um, which I did to myself multiple times. So now, if you try to, I should probably show you first, this preset has three separate uh, base presets within it. So if I extract it over here, we see all of those extract correctly. If I try to extract it without enough space, it gives a warning and we can abort the operation. So now you don't accidentally um, overwrite your stuff, which is, uh, you know, generally ideal. Um, now, as far as new macros go, um, I'm just going to work my way from left to right. Uh, and you will notice on some of these that there is a note field now. For anything that seemed like it could use some explanation, I threw some information in the notes field so that that is available to users. Um, the store with all these tags, 2x. So with MHRIX, uh, universal, and overriding. Um, I, I previously had explained that frequently you'll end up with um, selective information showing in your phasers when there isn't really any and you just have to store merge again. Um, I have since made a, ha I, I was doing the, the double store so much that I just turned it into a macro um, because it, I have not found any situations where the second store hurt me. And in fact, what I found was that adding the overwrite tag instead of merge meant that any so just to be clear on what's a base preset, any of these base presets um, that I'm doing an overwrite to can only have um, one set of information in it. Um, again, referencing back to the video describing the difference between universal and global, a universal preset might have multiple sets of separate global information in it, which can be confusing and infuriating. So by including overwrite, whatever I currently have in the editor will be the thing, will be the the single waveform that's being referenced by any fixtures referencing that preset. Um, so now, just that, um, when I build whatever my my uh, phaser is, if I go over to my phaser bar and I change my transition width, um, I am purely just using that macro. I tap it once, tap the spot where I want it to store, um, and that's it. Uh, I don't actually use the normal store a matrix universal anymore it's always the double store um i think i've kept the original around in case i i run into some edge case which i think happens on very very rare occasion but i can't think of one off my head right now um and i guess just to demonstrate what the selective I issue would normally be if i go to the first step and integrate as ma at yeah second step Integrate zero. I believe this will do it. Nope. All right. Well, I'm not going to spend a bunch of time trying to recreate it. But um, the, again, watch earlier videos. You'll see when the um, fake selective information shows up. 
this macro works around that. Clone attributes is the same, phaser extract, phaser ingest. Um, what is new, so call single line is the same as it was before, call as recipe template's the same, and as a reminder as to what call as recipe template does is it just grabs all of the recipe lines inside of a preset and dumps them into your recipe editor. So if I say call as recipe template on this preset, you will see in the recipe editor that we have, it's, it's a exact copy of what those recipe lines were, um, which isn't really going to be helpful. And I can't say I ever actually use this macro. Um, I've once again left it there because I, I don't know if anyone else is using it. I don't remember why I originally created it, to be honest. Um, what I use instead when I'm doing all recipe programming, and I'm kind of 50-50 between all recipe and um, conventional programming, MA2 style programming, whatever you want to call it. When I'm doing all recipe programming, I have a call as recipes uh, macro, which is similar, but so I'm going to click it, hit this preset, and sorry, I guess I should clarify what the purpose is. So when I am um, on MA2, I would frequently just double, t uh, double tap on a phaser or effect, sorry, um, to be able to call it into the programmer. And then if I didn't want one of the, the fixture groups, I would just off that group. Um, because usually when I'm building a an effect, I'm it's kind of working as a a self-contained unit. All of the things in that effect, all the fixtures in that effect, are kind of doing something cohesive. Um, so I use double click a lot on MA2, um, and when I'm programming in that style on three, I still do that to recreate that functionality with recipes. Um, what I have instead, this call is recipes macro. And what it does is it looks inside of this recipe preset. It grabs each of the groups that are used in recipes and it says at this preset. Um, so it's each of those groups, but it is at the, the outer preset, not this random recipe line inside of a preset that causes massive reference issues. Uh, and that's my emulation of the double click functionality when I'm programming with recipes. So that's new. Um, I clear out uh, phaser to recipe, multi-line, single line, same as they were before, slightly differently named. Um, I have these helper edit recipe on and off macros that are just single Lua lines. Um, I've seen the, the other macros out there doing the same thing. There's nothing groundbreaking here. It's just edit recipe doesn't work with the toggle keywords of on and off like every other uh toggle keyword, uh, at least not as of version 2.3. So those had to be built. Hopefully those will not be necessary soon. Uh, and additionally, speaking of things that will hopefully not be necessary soon, are the last two macros, phaser extract and phaser ingest, uh, use pool location. Um, so this is going to be relevant if you are trying to export phasers from one show file to another that have been built using this system where you have recipe lines referencing a different recipe line. There's a bug that is still present as of version 2.3 where when you export a preset that contains um, any recipe line that has its own internal values, they do not import into the destination show file correctly. You will see that they export correctly uh, if you go and open up the XML file, all the data is there, but it does not import. It just gives you empty, an empty slot. Um, so you might import your phaser and think that you have everything in there, and then, I don't know, get like two hours into programming, um, not paying attention, and realize that all of your test patterns, or maybe an entire song's worth of phasers, are no longer actually present. So what I had to do, uh, because... When you use the extract macro, the plugin is using the data of the handle of this macro. So if you've ever built a macro line with handles where it turns the text yellow, um, that handle just knows where this, what this object is. It doesn't care what the name of it is. It doesn't care um, what position it is in the pool. Um, it, it identifies this object as its own entity. So now that I've moved it, I can still hit ingest and it'll work correctly. For the purposes of exporting and importing, what I had to do 
on multiple shows was extract every single phaser related to a song, um, export all of those components, including gaps, so they would maintain their position within the pool, and then re-import them. Um, and I had to make a special version of the extract and ingest functions that reference the pool location rather than uh, the handle because the handle will no longer be the same once it's in a new show file. So these macros are the same um, as the normal extract and ingest macros, but they're, the plugin is now referencing the pool location. So if I move this and I try to do an ingest function, nothing will happen until I move it back to where it existed originally and it knows to ingest it. So um, purely exists for exporting and importing um, because of a bug that as of version 2.3 has still not been addressed. Hopefully will be addressed soon, um, but we'll find out. So that's it for the update. Um, go forth, download it. Hopefully it is helping people. Um, if there are any massive changes that people want to the workflow, let me know. Um, this is my personal workflow, so I'm not making promises on what will or will not get implemented, but I'm obviously happy to hear feedback. Um, and I'll be honest one way or the other on whether I can make something out of it. So, uh, yeah, thank you all and happy programming.